Hello and welcome to another video from Colour with Claire. Today I'm going to be doing a bit of a coloured pencil comparison for you. Um, one of the most common questions I get asked on my blog is what are the best pencils to use? Which ones um, give good coverage without having to press down hard? Um, are they soft? Are they hard pencils? Um, do you need to work a bit harder at them? Uh, and what are the blending what are the blending capabilities like? So I thought I would just take a selection of the most popular pencils on the market and just show you what they can do in real time basically. Um, so I've made this a bit of a crude chart here for you. Um, I've just done it really quickly and we're gonna see how these pencils perform. So we've got the Statler Ergo Soft, Micador Color Rush, Marco Ruffin, the Uni 888, Derwent Artists. Prismacolor Premier, Faber-Castell Polychromos and the Derwent Ink Tents. And I have them all here and I've decided to go with the same colours so that you can see a like-for-like -like comparison of like the blends and things. Um, and you can get a better idea of how each pencil compares to each other. So let's start with the Statler Ergo Soft. So obviously you can see up here I've got light pressure, medium pressure, heavy pressure, soft or are they hard? and what it blends like and ultimately my score out of 10 for colouring. So, the Statler Ergo Soft are in the budget range of pencils and they really are true to the name. They don't just feel soft to the touch like the barrels, they also feel really, really soft um, leads as well. So here you can see medium pressure and then a really heavy pressure. I did start to record this, I don't know if you can make out, I've had to put some uh, white labels over because I did start to record and then I made a complete mess of it. So <laughs> um, that's probably why it looks a bit weird up here. But um, So you can see the light pressure, we're still getting a decent amount of pigment with some really light coverage. So. I know that a lot of people struggle with the hands, they have, might have problems with the fingers, arthritis, and they might not be able to um, have the strength or the ability to do heavy pressure. So they need a pencil that's going to give good coverage with just a light pressure. And I do think Statler Ergo Soft, being as cheap as they are as well, are a really good option um, for those who need to get a budget pencil. So the next thing is, are they soft or are they hard? I would not say these are the softest pencils on the market, but for the price and the comparison in that way, um, they definitely are in the soft category. So I'm gonna give those a tick in the soft category. Uh, next, we've got blends. So as you can see, I've got a red and an orange. And I'm gonna see how well these can blend into each other. So. What I do when I blend is I go from quite a deep saturated colour and I gently get lighter and lighter and then I come in with the other colour doing the exact opposite mirror of what I've just done, bring it in so that it, the light bit in the middle of both colours is the bit that's going to be blending. So. I just work with it a little bit until it sort of looks pretty seamless and again I'm just using a light pressure here this isn't a, a perfect blend um, on any of these pencils because I'm just doing it to show you but it gives you an idea so yeah really nice to me that's a, that's a really good blend um, for a budget pencil so out of 10 for colouring I am going to give these pencils a definite 8 out of 10 um, because they're not they're not brilliant, they're not amazing, they're not anything to shout about, but for the price um, and the nice coverage, definitely a decent choice. So next we have got the Micador Colour Rush, which looks something like this. Um, these pencils are readily available in Australia, but not really anywhere else. But there is an artist on YouTube who you might have heard of called Peter Hewitt who um, uses these pencils and raves about them and since then a lot of people on the colouring groups have been sourcing them um, and you know testing them out because they really are brilliant and again they're a budget choice I think they only cost um, you know under ten dollars in Australia something like that so 
again, really good choice for those who haven't got a lot of cash to lay out for colouring supplies. And as you can see, this is the reason why they are so um, talked about and used on colouring groups is because the pigment is really, really saturated. You know, it's an amazing colour. There are some pencils around about the same price as these, which definitely don't give anything like that pigment. So brilliant. Uh, are they soft or hard? Again, not the softest, um, but they are definitely in the soft category. And then the blends. So let's start again. Look at that lovely rich, and I'm hardly pressing down at all. Again, really nice blend there. Not perfect. It's, they're not quite soft enough to be amazingly seamless, but I think that's going to do for 99.9% .9 colorists. And I am going to give these pencils, again, an 8 out of 10. Maybe even an 8.5, because they do have that slight bit more saturation than the, um, the Statler Ergo Soft. So next is the Marco Ruffin. Lots and lots of people use these on the colouring groups. They're very popular because they are, again, quite cheap to buy. Um, and they come in, I don't know how many colours, um, 70 colours? I'm not sure, I need to look that up. And as you can see, even more pigment with the light pressure than the previous two pencils. So the difference between these, in fact, I should put on this, um, whether they're oil or wax based, is um, that these are oil based um, and many people do prefer them because there is no wax bloom um, that occurs and they just seem to blend a little bit better uh, but oil pencils will always be that touch harder than wax so that is something to consider depending on your colouring style but yeah as you can see again just really good coverage and they are sort of in between soft and hard. I'm gonna put the tick there because it's a, just a little bit more towards the hard side, but they are they're not they're not classed as hard, definitely. Uh, the blends, let's give this a go. So yeah, nice coverage again, seems to get rid of the white on the paper a little bit more than the previous two pencils, um, and the blends are pretty good, pretty good. So I'm going to give these pencils again an 8.5. All these pencils really are pretty high on the chart to be honest, there's nothing on here that's you know really awful, um, they're all really good brands, really good makes. Um, and next we've got the uni number 888 these are um, from Mitsubishi they're made in Japan I believe and they come in this box just in case you're gonna have a look for them and we'll start with the light pressure So as you can see, we get really, really deep coverage from the heavy pressure. Um, light pressure is pretty much identical across the board, as is the medium really. Uh, but this heavy, this seems to have more pigment, I think, maybe on a par with the Micador, because they are slightly different shades. Um, as for soft and hard, um, I, they're not the softest. Again, I'm going to put them sort of here because they, they aren't, I wouldn't describe them as soft pencils, but they're definitely not hard. So they're gonna go sort of on the softer side, but more in between. So for blends, let's see how these work. Mm. Not 
the best for blends, to be honest. I'm going to try and work it a little bit. But as you can see, it it is quite defined um, where the colour, where the red stops, the orange begins, which is not really what we're looking for in a seamless blend. Um, yeah, so no, not my favourites for blending, to be honest. They're not bad, don't get me wrong, but definitely not my favourites. Um, so with all that in mind, I think the colour coverage with heavy pressure is really good and that's a bonus that they've got going for them they're not the softest and I do like to colour with soft pencils and the blends just aren't no they're not where I would like them to be so I'm going to give these a 6 out of 10 next we've got Derwent Artist Pencils now Derwent are synonymous with quality as most colourists will know and these are what the Artist Pencils look like so let's start with the red and the light pressure. It was pretty hard to find a decent red. I've got the 36 set and this is more orangey than red to be honest, but this was the closest I could find to the red. Right, so these pencils straight off the bat feel very hard. Um, you definitely need that heavy pressure to get any sort of saturation onto the page and I can see these sort of little black very micro fine black dots all over it which I think are they made out of oil I'm not sure what they're made out of but it's not it's not really a nice look a nice finish and as I say they are very very hard so I'm going to see how they blend in a moment but I'm definitely putting those in the hard category so let's check for blends yeah, they feel really sticky on the page. You know, they don't just glide over, which is what you would want, really. And they sort of skip a little bit as if there's some wood, you know, sticking out and you've just caught the wood, but there isn't. It's, it's strange, really. We'll come in with the orange. You can hear that, how squeaky it sounds. They do leave quite a lot of dust residue as well, which is strange because hard pencils usually don't. So again, coverage is not brilliant, saturation is not brilliant um, compared to the unis even. Um, I definitely would not recommend these for colouring. Um, I have reviewed them on my blog and yes, they are um, quality pencils. They're always going to be quality with Derwent, but I do think these are more for... Um, a coloured pencil artist who would maybe draw and sketch and need that harder harder um, pigment lead and not really for colouring books. I think you'd probably rip through the page if you tried to get decent um, coverage with these. So unfortunately my score for colouring on these is a 3 out of 10. Next is Prismacolor Premier. So this is again one of the most well-known brands, the, one of the most expensive because they are very soft and very high quality. Um, so we will start with the light pressure and I am barely even, you know, pressing at all on this and you can see lovely rich orange colour there. Medium, again just very slight bit more pressure, nothing hard and you've got really really good um, pigment there. And then heavy pressure, absolutely beautiful. So soft, definitely, definitely, they get a double tick in the soft because they are extremely buttery, extremely creamy. I don't think you can get any softer than Prismacolors, to be honest. Um, blends, again, these are brilliant for blends because of that softness. As you can see it sort of just changes the colour when you put another colour over the top it, it just melt it just molds with it and they're absolutely brilliant for blending they're my absolute favourites for blending in fact yeah absolutely love them 
don't get much more seamless than that and I probably could make it even better if I spent more time on it and I'm going to give these a score bearing in mind that they are so soft and they are easily breakable the leads do break and you can sharpen them and sharpen them and sometimes you can get right down to sort of here and it's pretty ridiculous so I'm not going to give them a perfect 10 out of 10 but they're definitely going to get a 9 for their colouring abilities and next we have got Faber-Castell Polychromos. Now I know for definite that these are oil based and they are the probably in line with Prismacolors for the most used coloured pencils for colouring. So here's the light pressure, as you can see again, beautiful coverage, you know, it's, it's really dark and, and deep even though we're not hardly pressing at all. We've got the medium pressure and then we've got the really hard pressure. Absolutely wonderful. I think pressure wise, they're on a par with, if not better than the Prismacolor. Now with them being oil based, they are not as soft as the Prismas, but they are still a soft pencil. So I'm gonna put them sort of here, um, because if you want super soft, you'll want Prismacolor. If you want soft, but not so soft, they're gonna break all the time, Faber-Castell definitely. Blends, again, amazing blends with these pencils. The watchword for using polychromos is layers. Um, a lot of people don't get on with them, funnily enough, even though they are praised and lauded everywhere, a lot of people just cannot get used to them. And I think that is because they are using this hard pressure all the time to try and get um, brilliance of colour. But with these pencils, you really need to go in light layers um, and they, they will just layer forever, these pencils. So you can just keep going and going and going. But as you can see, gorgeous seamless blend, brilliant saturation of colour. Um, I can't really find anything wrong with them and for that, um, I'm going to give them a 10 out of 10. Lastly, we've got something a little bit different because these um, can be and are really intended to be mixed with water, but they are very, very, very soft and they can be used without water, they can be used dry. And I just want to see how these can blend and how they look if they are dry. So, light pressure, immediately gorgeous saturated pigment, just amazing if you compare it to say up here, the Mikadors, the Derwent, amazing. Medium pressure, lovely and creamy, and then your hard pressure. So these um, pencils, with them being um, ink based, so they're not watercolour pencils, they are, they are ink based. So they are going to be really saturated, really deep colour, um, just off the bat, because that's how they're made. And for that reason, they do feel very dense and very sticky on the paper. They're not something you could just sort of colour with. You'd have to take time to get it right. And they are definitely soft. I'm putting them in the super soft category. And let's see how they blend dry. So as you can see, with them being so soft, they you do have to work a little bit at getting the white, the tooth, you know, to be completely covered. And the softness does give that residue on the paper so be careful if you are one of these people like me that just um, likes to spread the hand over it to move the dust and then all of a sudden it will be uh, smudged everywhere so not sure if you can hear this but they do have a similar sort of squeaky feel as the Derwent artist but they are a lot a lot better as you can see for coloring um, blends wise looks really good to me um, but I don't think I would ever use these dry. Um, that's just not what they're intended for. It doesn't feel like that's what they're intended for. It doesn't feel right to colour with them dry. Um, but you can see how the coverage is and adding water, it just gets even better. So, out of 10 for colouring, uh, dry, I would give them maybe a 7. Um, but you know with water they're amazing in fact I'm just gonna see if I can find a bit of water brush here that got some water in let's have a look yes and just show you quickly how amazing these these are when um, 
water is added. Look at that richness of colour. As I said, they're not watercolours, so you're not going to get a really pale, sort of wishy-washy colour. You're going to get bright, bold, vibrant colour. So, and even, I mean, even with a little bit of pigment here on the light pressure, you're getting amazing coverage. An amazing, solid blocks of colour. So, yeah, absolutely wonderful. Um, I'm going to give them, with water, because that is how they are intended to be used, a definite 10 out of 10. Amazing. So... Overall, I would say that the Derwent artists have come out on the bottom for colouring. As you can see, they're just not they're just not uh, performing how we would want them to, and they do take a lot of work. And then up here, we've got the absolute creme de la creme, Prismacolors, Faber Castell, Derwent Ink Tense. To be honest, if you want an easier colouring experience where you want the blends without doing too much work, I would go for the Prismacolors every day of the week. If you like to take your time, build up layers, um, and you prefer oil-based pencils, polychromos are the way to go. And again, Derwent Ink Tents, not amazing dry, to be honest, but adding water, absolutely wonderful pencils. They're just uh, a dream to use with water. Budget-wise, I would say that the... Hmm... The unis do look good for saturation, but they don't blend like I'd like them to. So I think, all in all, either the Marco Ruffines or the Ergo Soft, if you're looking for a budget pencil. Really, really quickly, I'm just going to show you how well these arrays as well. So I've got a battery eraser here. I'm going to make a couple of passes over it. That's not doing anything at all, it's just smudging, smudging it completely. And I've also got a normal rubber here, just on the end of a pencil, for those who don't have a battery operated one. Oh, it's going to come off. Let's see. If you don't have a battery operated rubber, I would highly highly recommend getting one they are amazing um the derwent one is the one i use this one and as you can see they just perform loads better um on erasing than a normal rubber does um so for erasing i would say the unis are really good uh, the micador color rush are good as well derwent ink tents don't even bother <laughs> Uh, that just smudges all your colour around. Um, out of these two, mm, these probably Prisma colours probably erase better, which is crazy because usually the Polychromos are, are brilliant erasers and Prisma colours are a little bit harder uh, to erase. But all in all, I would say budget, Ergo Soft or Raffine, uh, if you've got the money, Prisma colours if you like soft. Polychromos if you like to work a little bit harder and have oil and your ink tents if you like to work with the water. So I really hope you've enjoyed um, this comparison and got something from it um, and I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.